let's see, that was six minutes. I've got to, I've got to get it done in 10. No, it's, uh, it's, it's a great honor and a little bit of a surprise. Uh, it's not a surprise that Nick talked about that first meeting with then uh, President Bashar Assad and the fact that people from this organization have been reaching out throughout the Middle East beyond Lebanon's borders since its founding to try to find a way to help Lebanon and help the region. And that's one of the reasons that, uh, that I think we're all proud to be here tonight, is that this is an organization of Americans, founded by Americans, for the benefit of America, but also recognizing that problems abroad do not stay abroad, crises come home, and that only through an active, uh, reasonable engagement can we bring peace to the world. We haven't succeeded with that, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try to sound like Spence Abraham because he's better at funny than I am. But when I came into Congress 17 plus years ago, I had 17 days under President uh, Bill Clinton before George W. Bush took over. The one thing I knew was that under Bill Clinton, we'd had mostly peace, huge prosperity, and there was a world order that seemed to be working. It's now 17 years later and nobody would say that. So as much as, uh, as Nick was very proud to say that we've engaged, there's a lot more to be done. And organizations like the ATFL and many of you who also do this work independently and through other organizations, we as Americans have to continue to engage if we're going to help uh, the region that our ancestors came from. Some people in this room themselves were born there. But we're not going to help it without all Americans knowing more and engaging more. So any time that I'm involved in ATFL, I'm proud of that. Tonight I was, I was talking to Najad Ferris, and I was asking him for those pictures from 1997, which apparently Zaina has. When we were young, we were in Lebanon celebrating uh, as the ATFL the first uh, legal visit to Lebanon after the lifting of the travel ban and a very young Nishad, and an incredibly young Zaina. <laughs> she wasn't just not drinking, she wasn't old enough to drink. <laughs> you guys think that's a compliment. That's actually the truth in this case. Uh, but it was a long time ago, and it was a major accomplishment of the ATFL. But since that time, the engagement by many people in this room and the organization has continued to make a difference. And so, that's my entire speech is that I'm proud of this organization. Uh, as, I, as I leave Congress, I will by no means be leaving uh, involvement with the ATFL. And, and I think that all of us need to redouble under this administration and ones to come if we're going to bring peace in the region uh, to the troubled area of Syria, to the spillover of refugees into, uh, into Lebanon, into Jordan, and all the way into Europe. So, uh, Nikki. You have been a friend. Uh, I always call him Nicky, like he's a little brother. It's, uh, it's a little scary. Uh, but uh, I miss Nick, and let me tell you why. It's really hard to get a Democrat willing to go to the places I want to go to. <laughs> it's like, let's go to Zimbabwe for the change of dictator. <laughs> Nicky would have gone, okay? <laughs> let's go visit refugee camps in, uh, in the Baka. Nicky would have gone, okay? Nick, you got to get those Democrats to, to feel the need to go to those places because it does make a difference. It makes a difference when members of Congress visit. It makes a difference when the administration visits. So uh, I've used up my, my full four minutes. I want to thank all of you, and I look forward to seeing you next year in a completely different role, but I think for all of us as supporters of this great organization. Thank you. Good night.